What's up, folks? Top Chef Season 20, Episode 9 has come and gone, and now it is time for me to Jake explains the F out of it for you. I can't curse within the first 15 seconds of any episode because YouTube is a big whiny bitch. Ooh, that was 14 seconds. Whatever. Uh, eight chefs remain, and you can feel that pressure start to close in on us. We got maybe four, maybe five episodes before the finale. So we know what's uh, about to go down. Things are going to get emotional. Padma comes in wearing a corset made out of discarded Billy Idol jackets. And we meet the legendary Claire Smith. She's not only here to help judge Restaurant Wars, but to host them in her own three Michelin star restaurant in London called Core, which I believe is named after a fantastically terrible movie starring Aaron Eckhart. The inner core and the outer core. You following me? Fun fact, Claire Smith actually opened that restaurant using her family's money that they made with their rare mineral mines. I call that an Octavium. Bet you didn't know there were two shitty movies that couldn't come up with a new mineral name. This is why we're here. Unobtainium. 1,000 degrees. Unobtainium converts heat to energy. Because unobtainium is a superconductor. Or something. Unobtainium. Tell me you didn't know that. How interesting. How bizarre. The twist for this season's Restaurant Wars is that none of the chefs will have to worry about front of house, given that Claire's staff will handle everything outside of the kitchen. This, like many things in the show, has to be treated like a blessing and a curse. Last year, front of house mistakes sent Jackson packing. But this just adds pressure to the chefs to really wow the judges with the dishes in the overall menu. Victoire and Tom don't have restaurant wars in their country's top chef series, but Tom is familiar the with it. The most challenging, a lot of chefs are scared as about it. Buddha and Victoire draw the knives for team leader, and this made me literally laugh out loud. Buddha is a tactician, and he's already shown a huge proclivity to restaurant wars. This year's no different. The two leads start picking their teams, and Victoire seems to think that she should start off by picking the donkey first. Buddha starts with Ali, but if you're gonna pick fish, you gotta pick chips because... They come as a bundle. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> it's Papi and Habibi. Victoire calls Gabri her angel, and my sentiments exactly, but that does end up meaning that Sarah gets picked last, and it seems like it stings a little bit. Bring it on, bitches. You picked me last. This year's Restaurant Wars will be to create at least four dishes for 50 guests and the judges who will be seated... At a chef's table. Not the judge's table, at a judge's table, which means... We got a secret judge in the crowd. Let's talk about the two teams. Buddha immediately has a clear vision. At least they cut it that way. He wants to call the restaurant UK for United Kitchen. And each of the chefs will do a play on a traditional British classic. Sarah's a little worried about the theme, but Buddha is confident they can make each dish gel together. Restaurant Wars must have a concept. If it doesn't have a concept, we've already lost. Victoria's team is pitching ideas, and Tom comes up with what I would consider a pretty good idea. Four chefs from four different continents. Each chef cooks something from their own country. They call it Roots, but Nicole isn't immediately fond of the idea. I'm feeling a little bit um, too restricted by that. She wants to cook Italian because that better represents the roots of her cooking. And then she tries to find a better name for the restaurant, but Victoire swats it down. Did, did you have a Something suggestion cool. for a name or a theme? I love roots. We appreciate you, man. Thanks. Nicole wants to do a tortellini, which would be a dangerous choice just in Top Chef alone, especially dangerous to do during a restaurant wars. Victoire's team seems to think that they can start slow and then ramp up. You can find our groove. Exactly. Mm -hmm. One table of four and one table of two. And everyone is on board initially. I do this for the I'm already feeling this. The budgets are big here. A thousand dollars at specialty stores and another two thousand dollars to spend at Whole Foods. So we won't have to worry about any donkey related shopping debacles. So it's 80 bucks, yeah? Yeah. You think I can get some tomatoes? Just one each color. You think we can buy some green bush? I don't know what I spent. I Damn. We'll have all new donkey related shopping debacles. <laughs> We're ready. Yeah. Is this your spoon? No, on? no, it must be the other team. I hope they don't need it. So in case you didn't figure it out already, the team starts cooking and Gabri immediately notices that the key ingredient for his dish is absolutely missing. I mean, you can buy it, but there's not. Finally, Sarah comes over from the UK team to explain what happened. There was a crate that didn't, it had like cauliflower, mustard and foam, time. and thyme. I'd love to come down on my favorite scape donkey. But after a few half-hearted apologies, Tom really starts to look like he feels super bad. He offers to help Gabri, and for the rest of the episode, you can see a significant change in his awareness of his other teammates. The Roots team shows up on location the next day. Tom takes the explanation of the menu and the details of the service to the staff at CORE, which is great because half his team is immediately in the weeds. 
Gabri has to reinvent his dish with onion instead of cauliflower, but you know Gabri, he just sucks it up and does it. He's a powerhouse. Nicole's tortellini did not travel well, and she needs to remake half of them. I was trying to figure out if there was a term for when one person is weeded, and then they just make everyone else around them miserable. Uh, the funniest answer I got from my friends was, it's called a line cook. <laughs> Unfortunately, Nicole is not handling her setbacks well. Nope. I'm in it for the next 30 minutes, man. Sorry. For the 30 minutes, I need to make this orbit. Hey, are you yelling at me? No, Nicole. He's not yelling at you. Hey, are you yelling at me? Me. I'm not yelling at you either. Hey, are you yelling at me? Stop, don't come back. Hey, are you yelling at me? I'm not horrified, am I? Hey, are you yelling at me? I'm afraid you are. Hey, are you The guests arrive and the judges arrive and the dishes start to go out. There's quite a bit of wait time between the first and second courses, mostly due to Nicole's tortellini setbacks. Gail wanted to know if the Roots team picked an executive chef, but Tom was like, I said forget about it, cuz. Did he answer your question? Not really. I'm sorry, but all questions must be submitted in writing. But let's not be too hard on Tom today is a sentiment that Nicole is not interested in sharing with me. <laughs> Soon there are 18 guests all waiting for Nicole's tortellini dishes, but at least she's owning up to it like a champ. The service order that Tom wrote, we started off too slow. It should have been a rush at the beginning to clear out some of the guests. We have to find our groove. Exactly. <laughs> Let's look at each team's full menu and get a breakdown of how it went. Tom makes a confit leek with leek velouté and black garlic chestnut puree. Nicole made a shellfish tortellini with lobster, king prawn, and vermouth beurre blanc. Gabri made a poached sea bream with black watape and trout caviar. Victoria made a tiramisu rice flour cake with mascarpone and plantain cream. On the UK team, Buddha made the first course with coddled egg, black pudding, truffle toast, and tomato tea, which everyone loved. Amar made a scallop tartare with vat van and pickled vegetables. Sarah made a Colin skink, leek-wrapped cod, potato, and smoked onion. Ali made a lamb loin with frica and apricots, and also a Cornish pasty on the side made with braised lamb and phyllo dough. For extra credit, Buddha made a fifth course of strawberries and cream flavored with basil and inverted meringue, which the chefs then take out to the guests personally for a little added touch. The difference between the Roots team and the UK team were night and day. The UK team educated the servers on the details of the dishes, explained the concept, and more importantly delivered on a concept that was cohesive and enjoyable, and no one waited 30 minutes for tortellini. By the time we get to the judges' table and they announce that the UK team was the clear winners, you can see the air just gets sucked out of the room for the Roots team. They announced the winner, and I don't want to take this away from Buddha. This is a big win. Getting to slay at Restaurant Wars in his mentor's kitchen, it's a dream come true for him. The Roots team is brought before the judges, and even though Tom made some serious mistakes with the reservations and ditching an entire basket full of his teammates' ingredients, his dish was delicious. Victoria's tiramisu was great, but the judges did kind of complain a little bit about how none of the guests knew the story behind the dish. That's more of like a team problem than Victoire's problem. Either way, they sort of used that opportunity to sort of complain about how they didn't engage with the guests. Gabri's fish was delicious, but it got buried under too much sauce. And of course, one of the judges <laughs> has to wish that he had one more vegetable in there to cut things up. Nicole's tortellini was tasty, but it wasn't cooked well. Not to mention the fact that it was the least cohesive dish on the menu. Was it the lack of leadership or the lack of teamwork? Both? I don't know. Tom kind of sums it up succinctly when he's waiting for the judge's decision. Team challenge is always... It sucks. Doesn't matter who goes home, you, you still lose a little bit of yourself because it's a team responsibility. Well said, Tom. You were officially undonkified. Nicole and her tortellini get sent home. She makes a real go of it in Last Chance Kitchen, but sure, Mel, at this point, he's still the reigning champ. Sometimes there are amazing people that come into our lives to teach us a valuable lesson about ourselves. The trick is to listen for those moments and let them inform you. For those of us who have never been wrong, I suppose just keep being an imaginary version of yourself. For the rest of us, it's never too late to stop being a donkey. Oh, and don't forget about forgiveness. Someday you may have to rely on somebody else's ability to do so. See you next week. Translates into. Yeah! <laughs>
took me 12 times to figure that out. Okay. And he's going to freeze there until <laughs> we walk away from Yeah, him. okay, dope. This, is, this was dope. He's just going to freeze. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Um, you know, yeah. Oh. <laughs>